welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, but actually back to something that happened in Scotland during her reign, so not really to do with Elizabeth. But on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of August 1600, John Ruthven, 3rd Earl of Gurry, and his brother Alexander, Master of Ruthven, were killed in mysterious circumstances at their home Gurry House near Perth in Scotland. So why am I talking about a Scottish event today? Well, because the brothers were killed as they allegedly tried to kidnap King James VI of Scotland, who in 1603 inherited the English throne from Queen Elizabeth I. But who were these men and why did they try to kidnap the Scottish King? Or did they try to kidnap the Scottish King? Well, let me tell you a bit more. John and his younger brother Alex were the sons of William Ruthven, 1st Earl of Gurry. John and his younger brother Alex were the sons of William Ruthven, 1st Earl of Gurry, and his wife Dorothea Stewart. In 1588, John became Earl of Ruthven following the death of his older brother James. The brothers had been allowed to inherit the earldom, even though their father had been executed as a traitor in 1584. John and Alexander were both educated at Perth Grammar School and the University of Edinburgh. Contemporaries described John as of great expectation and much respected by the professors. And they described Alexander as a learned, sweet and hurtless young gentleman. In 1592, John was elected as provost of Perth. And in 1593, his mother and sister helped smuggle Francis Stuart, 5th Earl of Bothwell, into Holyrood Palace. Bothwell then forced himself, brandishing a sword, into King James's bedchamber. He wasn't there to harm the king, though. He was there to protest his loyalty, following his attention for treason. In October 1593, John signed a letter with his brother-in-law, the Earl of Athol, and others to Queen Elizabeth I, in which they offered to serve her and support her policies in Scotland. In the summer of 1594, John travelled to Padua to study at the university there. Then he moved on to Rome and Venice before travelling to Geneva in 1599. There he stayed with reformer Theodore Beza for nearly three months before travelling on to Paris, where he met Queen Elizabeth I's ambassador, Henry Neville, who subsequently reported to Queen Elizabeth that John was exceedingly well affected to the cause of religion devoted to Elizabeth's service and a nobleman of whom, for his good judgment, zeal and ability, exceeding good use could be made on his return. John arrived in London in April 1600, where he received a warm welcome from the Queen, and then he travelled on to Edinburgh and on to Perth. In June 1600, despite the fact that the King had approved John's request for protection from his debts for one year, John was outspoken in his opposition of King James VI's taxation plan to fund his army, stating that it was dishonourable of the king to ask for more than Scotland could give him. The king was furious. According to King James VI's account of events, the king was setting off for a day of hunting from Falkland Palace's stables at 7am on the 5th of August 1600, when he was approached by Alexander, who informed him that he had important information for the king's ears only. Alexander claimed that he'd met a mysterious man carrying a large pot of gold coins and that he'd locked up the man and the gold in his brother John's house, Gurry House. Alexander wanted the king to question the man. James was suspicious, but knew that if the man was a Jesuit priest and he was carrying foreign coins, that the king could confiscate the money, so it was worth checking out. Another version is that John claimed that he'd found treasure in his home and wanted to use it to help support the king. Still another version is that James surprised John with a surprise visit, John being slightly forewarned by his brother riding ahead. Whatever the cause of the visit, the king dined at Gurry House and after dinner allegedly left the dining room with Alexander. 
A bit later, apparently, the king was seen and heard crying, I am murdered, treason, my lord Mar, help, help. The king's men went to help, killing Alexander on the way. John was also killed in the subsequent commotion. But did John and Alexander concoct this plot to kidnap the king, a man who'd been responsible for the death of their father? Or was James's account a cover for assassinating two men who were getting in the way of his policies? Or was it just a spontaneous brawl? It's impossible to know, as the two men accused of plotting against the king were conveniently killed. John and Alexander were posthumously found guilty of treason on the 15th of November 1600, and their bodies hanged, drawn and quartered in Edinburgh, their heads being displayed at Edinburgh's toll booth and their limbs around Perth. The 5th of August was designated as a day of celebration for the king escaping this conspiracy unharmed. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 5th of August 1549, during the reign of King Edward VI, son of King Henry VIII, the Battle of Cliff St Mary took place near Exeter in Devon. It was part of the Prayer Book Rebellion, a rebellion against the religious measures of King Edward's government. You can find out what provoked this rebellion and what happened when the Crown's forces got to Cliff St Mary in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. And you can find the link in the description. Thank you so much for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. And by the way, if you hear any weird noise in the background, um, a storm is just uh, happening out there. So lots of rain. Take care. Bye bye.